In this movie, we continue our exploration of the tool sets available to you in Anime Studio Pro. We'll take a look at the camera palette in this one, and we're not exploring each one of these in depth. We will do that over the course of actually building assignments. The movie just before this, we took a look at the layers palette, and we didn't explore all the details. But now as we get into the camera palette, both our drawing tools, our fill tools, our layer tools and our layer palette are going to come into play so you can kind of see how this works. And this is where anime takes a step away from other familiar drawing programs like Adobe Illustrator or Corel Draw. I've created just a basic shape here and again in our next section we cover drawing and creation of shapes. I'm doing this just for the purpose of talking about the tool sets now and the camera tools specifically. So we have a vector layer. We learned about that in our last movie. I'm going to duplicate this vector layer by clicking on the little layer icon with a plus sign over here. Now it's just duplicated. My translation tool, keyboard shortcut T is selected. I'm going to go ahead and press G actually to select the object. That's a keyboard shortcut for the selection tool over here in the upper left hand corner. By clicking in the middle of the square and then clicking the keyboard shortcut T again for translator move, I can go ahead and drag this around the layer now. For our purposes, I'm going to go ahead and change the color of this just a little bit. I will come over here to my shape selection tool. That happens to be keyboard shortcut Q. And don't worry, I'll be saying this less and less as we start working uh, more with these tools. But let's change the color to something a little more obviously different like blue there. I can go ahead and click in that, click off. We'll see that we've got a blue and red square. Now, how does all this plug into the camera palette or the camera tools over here? Anime gives you the ability to navigate your camera or your viewpoint in three dimensions. Remember the geometry days from high school? The graphs that you have where X is along the bottom and Y is the vertical? Well, this is going to become important now as we start moving shapes around and cameras around our scene. I'll select the translation points tool up here. With that selected, we can see that we've got an X and Y reference for our shape, where it is in space in reference to the center of the viewing window. However, if we come down to our layers tool, translate tool here, and this is the keyboard shortcut one, we now see that we have X, Y, and now we've got something called Z. Z is the third axis which creates the three-dimensional space. So if I increase the Z axis of this layer, layer two that I just duplicated for the blue square, we will now start to have visual depth. The Z axis comes right towards you from this view, right into your face. So a greater number will mean that the object is moving towards you. Well, how would I know if it's moving towards me? We'll explore just another little option we've got down here in the lower kind of center section of our workspace window. We have a side-by-side -side view. I'll click that now and we have two views. One is active, one is not. You can tell because the active viewport has a light gray square around the outside. I'm going to go ahead and select this one and click on it. So now we see that the one on the right is the active viewport. I'll come up to my view pull down menu. I'll say direction and this is going to change how we're viewing this second view. I'll choose right camera, a camera on the right side of our scene. Now we get something that looks like red dots. That happens to be our blue square as it's selected. And then we get this funny little shape here. This is your eye view. So if you can imagine an eye shape with a little arrow coming out of it, that's looking at that, that gives you an idea of where the camera is. This is actually your camera. I have my layer translation tool selected right here. We have Z depth. Watch what happens now when I grab this shape, which is affecting this layer, layer two, and move it towards the eye. We start seeing this in perspective, and suddenly in our regular front view, our camera view, the blue rectangle looks larger you can start building scenes in three dimensions with two-dimensional objects in Anime Studio. And now we're ready to take a look at the camera controls. When we come down here and select camera, we've got track, which is moving left and right. We have the zoom, which is effectively going in on the Z depth. And then we have a rotate and we have a or roll, and then we have a pan and pan lets us move up and down. If I select the pan tool right here and move in this scene, we can see like the camera is sitting on a tripod 
that it's starting to move around now. I'm going to go ahead and activate the right window frame here so we can see a view from the top. I'll come up to my view pull down menu, direction, top. So now we see the blue rectangle closer to the camera, the red one is back behind. I'm going to come down to my camera tools, I'm going to select the regular view over here on the left and activate that. And now I can go ahead and move my scene around a little bit and you'll notice that the camera over here on the right side updates as I drag that scene. Additionally I can also drag that camera in that view right there. When I take the pan tilt tool and select in here I can aim back this way to my scene. So while it still looks two-dimensional we've got a little three-dimension action going on. These moves can all be keyframed and animated so you can have a 2D environment and animate your camera going through it. There's all sorts of tricks to do this. We do cover this in detail in a section coming up, but this is how you begin using the camera tools in the tools palette.